Hello, Channel Nate viewers. I am DS, a psychologist, and welcome to another episode on Channel Nate. When I was very much younger, I used to wonder why people are so not motivated to go to school or to do any work at all. Especially in the past, I cannot understand why people need to take MC and miss an examination. For me, no matter how sick I am, I want to sit for an exam. So after learning more about cognitive functions and MBTI, now I understand that everybody have different priorities, they have different leading functions, and therefore everybody is different. Nobody is ideal. So definitely there is one very glaring shortcoming of this ENTJ, and I presume that other ENTJs are probably also going to have this shortcoming. So I think that many ENTJs are likely to be physically disorganized. So as an ENTJ, ah, <laughs> my room is really disorganized. My house is really disorganized. And sometimes when I go out in my outfit, it's not organized. It's not straight. It's, it's slanted to one side. Or I did not zip all the way up. <laughs> so there is a lot of disorganization in an ENTJ's life. And I think that this problem is likely to become more serious when the ENTJ is leading a single life. So if nobody cleans up after an ENTJ, an ENTJ's house may really end up like a... <laughs> Just to give you an idea how disorganized an ENTJ can be, now I'm going to give you some examples. I'm not going to show you because NI is about imagination. <laughs> First thing, whenever I use any toiletries, be it tubular like toothpaste or cylindrical like lotion, I do not cap. Yes, you did not hear it wrongly, I do not cap. So for example, let's say if I want to use toothpaste, I would naturally just open the toothpaste and then just leave the cap somewhere. Subsequently, I will always use the uncapped toothpaste and I do not press from the bottom, I press from the middle. So there are many people who do not think that this is an efficient way of using toothpaste. And because of that, my toilet is really unsightly, unless I bother to clean up. But usually I'm not motivated to clean. Hmm. As an ENTJ, I am really a workaholic. I much more prefer to do meaningful work. So cleaning is not meaningful for me. This doesn't mean that I'm unhygienic or not clean. I'm just disorganized. So if I bought something new, like a new shower gel, I will take the entire thing, the packaging, to the bathroom, and then I will just leave the packaging there until a time where I remember to take it out to throw. This is not because I'm lazy, it's just that it is not efficient for me to go out and just throw the thing and make one way trip. <laughs> In a way, it's they are lazy, but it's more about efficiency. It's just like when I go out and I have an umbrella in my bag, and then if it rains, I will use the umbrella. But after it stops raining, I will just keep the umbrella in my bag. No, I'm chilling. In my bag right now, no, I'm chilling. So when I return home, I will just leave the umbrella in my bag. The only way I could just leave the umbrella to dry is when I come back with the umbrella in my hand. So I will, on the way, leave the umbrella to dry. Otherwise, the umbrella will be left inside my bag for a very long time. So another problem that I have is when I throw things into the waste paper basket, I don't aim properly. So many people actually put a plastic bag over the waste paper basket so that uh, it's easier to collect the waste, right? So sometimes I just like dumped coffee or tea or whatever and then there spills and I don't really bother with it. I just think that maybe after that I can just clean it up, uh, but just messy. <laughs> Another thing is, I do not organize my stuff according to items or categories. So for example, many people would have like, this drawer is for stationery, this drawer is for uh, toiletries, this drawer is for other things. But for me, no. I leave my things in a very disorganized way, although I know what the category is. The category is just not based on items. For example, one drawer is meant for 
very important stuff. So I can have letters from the government inside, I can also place medication inside, I can also place other miscellaneous things that I consider very important inside. So you can open a drawer and find a lot of assorted items and find no trend in it. But for me, that drawer is meant for very important stuff. So when any family member comes and help me to organize my things, I will get totally frustrated because I cannot find the things. So there is a lot of disorganization around my house because I like it like that. But I know where my things are. So I have a few drawers. I know what I keep in each of those drawers because I know, okay, this thing is not very important. I should go to drawer B. Everything else that I have goes onto my table. And on my table, you will see this. So we have stacks of books, right? Usually people want to organize them like flat so that it's neat. Mine is like that. <laughs> so it does not matter at all whether things look neat or appealing. And it doesn't help that SE is my third function. So I am usually behaving like a little boy who needs a mother to clean up after me. I'm gonna do your laundry, I ain't your so in the past, I have a few partners. They actually find that I am very disorganized, but they do not mind cleaning after me. Mm, thank you so much. <laughs> but for me, actually, it does not really matter because uh, mess is something that I can live with. There is organization in the chaos that I can identify with. Now talking about previous partners, I find that ISFJs are really very able to put up with my disorganization. So a lot of times they realize that okay this room is really messy, they try to stack everything up so that it looks neater. But it does not really matter because very soon it will gravitate towards a mess again. Just like on the first day you go into a hotel room, it's nice, then you just do whatever that you want. The next day, the cleaner comes and helps to do housekeeping. It looks aesthetically very appealing and it will gravitate towards a mess again. So no point, right? So personally, I must always be very consciously aware that I need to clean. Then I will go and clean up my bathroom, for example. Otherwise, it's just left in a mess. I think if somebody is living with me, then there's somebody is very compelled to want to clean for me because it just looks very untidy and many people cannot stand untidy especially the SI dominance. Nonetheless, I do not see this as a bad thing at all. Why? Because personally, I can do my work very well, I earn enough money, I am well educated, uh, blah 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 blah. So from my partner's point of view, there may be nothing that they can do for me because I can handle myself really well. But in any love and relationship, everyone wants to feel needed and the need to contribute. So they can contribute if they want to clean up my place. <laughs> but thing is, do not rearrange the organization. If you want to just stack things and make it neater, then do so. But do not move my things anywhere else because I will not know where my things are. So from this ENTJ's point of view, Cleaning up or tidying up a place is not very important because it is not an important skill set. I can always pay someone to do it for me. So I can get like part-time cleaners to come into my house to do some dusting for example. So all I need to do is to invest more of my time to earn more money. However, it is definitely possible for me to do more of a housework. Especially if I am going to live with someone else. If I were to live with someone else, then I think that a more logical way to organize our lives is that maybe you have this side of the house, so you can put everything here, I'm not going to touch them, then I continue to use my side of the house. So dear ENTJs, are you disorganized as well? Do you cap your toothpaste? <laughs> so behind here, you see my bed and then it looks okay, right? Underneath the blanket, there's a lot of rubbish. <laughs> So I hope that this episode has helped you to understand the ENTJ better. And I think that what we have discussed in this episode could potentially be another difference between the ENTJ and the ESTJ. 
So dear viewers, if you have not subscribed, do consider subscribing so that we can bring you more ENTJ psychology and fun stuff. And for our existing viewers, thank you for supporting us this far. Okay, I am going to sign off now and I'll see you in my next episode. Goodbye!